Gauge tanks and surge tanks. The atmospheric gauge tank, a non pressurized vessel, is used to measure low flow rates or to calibrate metering devices on the separator oil lines in a testing system. When the flow rate is too low to efficiently drive oil to the burners, the tanks can temporarily store the oil. These skid mounted units have two compartments. As a transfer pump empties one compartment, the other is filled. A sight glass level built into each tank is used to calculate the change in volume based on the physical dimensions of the tank. The vertical surge tank is an H2S service vessel enables operators to measure and store liquid hydrocarbons with measurement capabilities and single or dual compartment versatility. The vertical surge tank is an H2S service vessel for storing liquid hydrocarbons after separation. It is used to measure liquid flow rates and the combined shrinkage and meter factor. It can also serve as a second stage separator, holding a constant back pressure by using its automatic pressure control valve on the gas outlet. The vertical surge tank consists of either a single or a double compartment vessel and a level measuring system with a sight glass or magnetic level. Dual compartment surge tanks enable the operator to empty one tank compartment while filling another. To prevent overpressure and overfilling, the surge tank is fitted with a pressure relief valve and a high and low level alarm system. The surge tank is designed with a diverter, vortex breaker, and stiffening rings capable of withstanding a vacuum in the vessel. It is also fitted with sampling, pressure, and temperature ports and includes a bypass manifold. Surge tanks operate in the vertical position, but they are transported in a horizontal position. The atmospheric, non-pressurized, gauge tank is used to measure low flow rates or to calibrate testing system metering devices on the separator oil lines. When the flow rate is too low to efficiently drive oil to the burners, the tanks can be used for temporarily storing the oil. The skid-mounted atmospheric gauge tanks have one or two compartments, in the latter case, as a transfer pump empties one compartment, the other is being filled. The built-in sight glass level is used to calculate the change in volume based on the physical dimensions of the tank. Safety features include flame arresters on each vent from the tank, a grounding strap to prevent static charge buildup. Although the atmospheric gauge tank is frequently standard equipment for well testing, it cannot be used when H2S is present in the effluent because the gas released from the tank is vented to the atmosphere, which would pose a hazard to personnel. The flame arrester is a safety device fitted to the gas vent line opening, and it is intended to allow flow but prevent flame transmission. The flame arrester functions by absorbing the heat from a flame front, thus dropping the burning of gas air mixture below its auto-ignition temperature. Consequently, the flame cannot survive. The heat is absorbed through channels or passages designed into an element. These channels are chosen and measured as the maximum experimental safe gap of the gas for a particular installation. These passages can be regular, like crimped metal ribbon or wire mesh or a sheet metal plate with punched holes, or irregular, such as those in random packing. The gauge tank is fitted with butterfly valves on its inlet and outlet. The butterfly valve is a type of quick-opening, low-pressure valve whose orifice is opened and closed by a disc that pivots on a shaft in the throat of the valve. A quarter turn of the handle moves the valve from fully open to fully closed position. The principal criteria for selecting a gauge tank are If the project requirements specify that a surge tank is required, a gauge tank is usually not needed. Storage requirements for some jobs may require more than one gauge tank. The service type required or the operating environment does not allow the use of a gauge tank when H2S is present. Additional selection considerations are Extensions of flexible plastic hoses for the gas vent lines are required. High oil flow rates can cause excessive pressure that will burst the safety seams on the tank. Gauge tank safety. The gauge tank is never used when H2S is expected to be in the well effluent. The gas from the gauge tank is vented to the atmosphere, so any H2S in the gas could endanger personnel. Before diverting the separator oil to the gauge tank, 
you must check the ability of the gas vent lines to discharge the full volume of gas liberated when the pressure drops from separator to atmospheric pressure. When using the gauging ports, check the gas vent lines to make sure a significant amount of gas is not being vented. If a significant amount of gas is being vented, measure the liquid levels later or wear a protective mask. When measuring liquid levels through gauging ports, it's always a good practice to wear a mask. When diverting the oil to the tank, always limit the flow rate to avoid filling the tank too rapidly. In case of high flow rates, someone should constantly monitor liquid levels and be ready to divert the flow back to the burners to prevent overflow. Prior to conducting any repair inside of the tank, it must be properly steamed cleaned and degassed. The person repairing the tank must be in constant contact with a person on the outside of the tank. Transport the gauge tank when it's empty, even a partially full tank has a much higher weight than an empty tank. Do not lift the gauge tank by the top eyes, the stress on the tank walls will destroy the roof safety seam. To lift the tank, use the anchor shoes on the skid that are designed for this purpose. The vertical surge tank is an H2S service vessel for storing liquid hydrocarbons after separation. The surge tank is used to measure liquid flow rates and the combined shrinkage and meter factor. Additional capabilities are as a second stage separator and to hold a constant back pressure by using its automatic pressure control valve on the gas outlet. The surge tank can be a single or double compartment vessel with a sight glass or magnetic level measuring system. The dual compartment surge tank enables emptying one tank compartment while filling the other. To prevent overpressure and overfilling, the surge tank is fitted with a pressure relief valve and high and low level alarm system. Additional fittings are a diverter, vortex breaker, and stiffening rings that can withstand a vacuum in the vessel. Sampling, pressure, and temperature ports and a bypass manifold are included. The sight glass is a weak point on the integrity of the surge tank. Because of this, two safety valves are installed on the ports to the surge tank. Both will shut if the flow past them exceeds their design point. The surge tank is fitted with an automatic control valve, ACV. The role of the ACV is to maintain and regulate a positive pressure inside the surge tank. When tank pressure rises, the controller opens the valve, and when pressure drops, the controller closes the valve. For safety purposes, the ACV is normally open. A non-return valve is fitted on the gas vent line, downstream of the automatic control valve. It is closed when there's no pressure in the surge tank. The non-return valve prevents any back pressure from entering the tank, causing the pressure inside the tank to increase above its maximum working pressure. Taking Combined Meter Factor with the Surge Tank Step 1. When the tank is ready for oil measurement, take note of the oil meter initial reading as well as the initial tank level reading. Step 2. When the tank is being filled by the oil from the separator oil outlet, the level inside the tank is increasing, bubbles of gas in the oil will be out through the tank gas vent line. Step 3. When the desired level is reached, divert the oil flow back to the burners and take note of the oil meter final reading as well as the duration of time taken to fill the tank. Wait for a few minutes to allow the dissolved gas in the oil to completely escape through the gas vent line. Step 4. When all the dissolved gas has escaped, take note of the final tank level reading and proceed to the calculation of the combined meter factor. The combined meter factor is the ratio of the true reading from the tank by the meter reading. The true reading in barrels is calculated by multiplying the difference of the final tank reading and initial tank reading by the tank volume coefficient. The meter reading in barrels is calculated by subtracting the initial meter volume reading from the final meter volume reading. Surge Tanks Equipment and Selection Guidelines Surge tanks are available in 80 and 100 barrel capacity, although the 80 barrel version is the most common. The 80 barrel version has one compartment and a working pressure of 50 psi. The 100 barrel version has two compartments and a working pressure of 150 psi. 
The principal criteria for selecting a surge tank are If the project requirements specify that a gauge tank is required, a surge tank is usually not needed. The service type required, or the operating environment, requires the use of a surge tank when H2S is present. Additional selection considerations are A surge tank needs less deck space than a gauge tank. A surge tank needs an air supply for the valve controller. Whether the surge tank will be used as a second stage separator. An additional gas vent line is required for the safety relief valve. A surge tank with two compartments may be required. Surge tank safety. Whenever H2S is expected to be in the well effluent, a surge tank must be used instead of a gauge tank. Before diverting the separator oil to the surge tank, you must check the ability of the gas vent line to discharge the full volume of gas liberated without creating a back pressure greater than the maximum pressure rating of the vessel. When diverting the oil to the tank, always limit the flow rate to avoid filling the tank too rapidly. In case of high flow rates, someone should constantly monitor liquid levels and be ready to divert flow back to the burners to prevent overflow. Prior to conducting any repair inside the tank, it must be steamed cleaned and degassed. The person repairing the tank must be in constant contact with a person on the outside of the tank. Transport the surge tank when it is empty, even a partially full tank has a much higher weight than an empty tank. The exhaust for the safety relief valve must be connected to a 4 inches pipe landing that must be located downstream and far away from the working area. Transporting the surge tank is a hazardous operation. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel in order to help us produce more content like this one. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video presentation.